Hello. Been a long time since we've gotten to talk, you and I. Back when I was covering annual CODs more regularly, Q&As were good filler content in the summer. Now it just seemed like a fun idea, since it's been a few years, which is finally long enough to feel like it again, thanks to forgetting everything I said last time. And this is odd, I'm not much of a camera person, but I realized, what do I even use for background gameplay? I'm not just gonna slap on some more classic Modern Warfare 2, done that, too reminiscent of lame update videos of the past, so in the spirit of doing something completely different, I'll just sit here talking for a long time, with whatever relevant video in the background. Actually, in case I have any zoomers watching, I, I probably need some gameplay to make it watchable. Whew, that's better. I will be reading from notes, of course, because I am bad at talking, and if I don't plan out my thoughts, they will not be thorough or concise, just the worst of both worlds. Actually, gotcha, this is blank. I'm an incredibly confident and spontaneously funny speaker, and I've memorized all the questions. But actually, this mic isn't even on, if you couldn't tell. I've been reading notes and lip-syncing myself this whole time. Actually, I didn't feel like recording, so this is just an AI version of myself. No, I wish. It's actually me. Okay, here we go. And we can start with some of the basic stuff, then we'll get weirder. As a certified classic, top five CODs, people love ranking things. I've done scuffed tier list stuff before, but the pain is that it's always such a mess of disclaimers, because, like, am I trying to think about objective quality or only go by how much fun I had, which is naturally super biased, but whenever you started playing, uh, am I trying to include campaigns and side modes, which I would often rank completely differently, or am I really just talking about the multiplayer, which is usually the bulk of the playtime? Uh, I'm just not going to think that hard about it and give you this based on how much fun I think of when I see it. Mainly the multiplayer. Plop. Uh, now cue the post disclaimers. Why is World at War not number one? Uh, I didn't play it, man. I didn't play it as a kid. What the hell? Modern Warfare 2019 is the best cut ever made, you r <laughs> Okay, I'm glad you like it, man. And so on for every other game. Anyway, just a bit more COD ranking here for the campaigns. Uh, I'm gonna give a trash answer here. It's pretty darn tough to look past nostalgia. If I'm trying to pick something like most fun, best cinematics, best characters, I'm just gonna say Modern Warfare 2. The real one, of course. Man, I love specifying that every time. Uh, the best lore? I don't know. Uh, I, maybe I should be giving that to BO3. They went kind of crazy. That's a game you have to read up on afterwards to understand the inception. And that might also be the, the hardest for me, the BO3 realism on console. Probably took the longest of any playthrough. Um, stuff like COD 1 was a great difficulty level 2, though. Uh, yeah, sorry for the not great answer if you wanted a, a different game for each. And uh, favorite drink? Only water, my man. I'm not good at the camera thing. It weirds me out. I feel like I'm in an apology video. Did you ever get around to killing 100 enemies, blinded by with a signal flare? Man, I killed 300 enemies, blinded by with a signal flare. Got that all done, no sweat. Uh, have they ever fixed that typo though? Not as far as I know. <laughs> and uh, how much was I blinded? I think nowhere near 300 enemies blinded me by with a signal flare. Uh, it was a pretty bad item, and most people were not crazy enough to do that challenge. Uh, a few people mentioned wanting to see Metal of Honor playthroughs, and uh, thank you for the kind words. I assume everyone means the classics that came before COD, and yep, very possible that at least one of those comes after the COD quest. I've seen a good number of requests for that as well. Uh, makes sense to me. And someone called them the spiritual successor. I'm guessing they meant predecessor, but if not, I don't know anything about recent Medal of Honor games. Unlikely that I get into any of those. I uh, actually enjoyed the one in 2010, though. The, the big objective modes where you progress forward, like war mode. Uh, that was really fun. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm pulling a question out of the future from the comments, asking... What is behind this curtain? Nothing. There's a, there's a door. Uh, what's behind the door? Hmm. The most deaths for any COD campaign. I would have to guess BO3 realism, but I do not know. Uh, you counted 235 for COD 2. Uh, maybe you mean in your playthrough, but I assume you mean in my video. Damn, I respect the dedication. I will say that I do show almost every death, like probably 98% of them in those playthroughs, even if it's a, a quick, rapid death montage just to show the passage of time. So whatever you count should be pretty accurate. <laughs> you can't get your head around my accent. Where am I from? Uh, thanks for the kind words. That's funny. Uh, you never really think about your own accent, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, maybe I talk in a weird way in videos. In my head, I'm not putting on a voice at all. It's not acting. Uh, maybe some people think that, uh, but I guess sometimes I do think it's Fun to talk kind of weird, like make a show of it. I don't know. Um, this is just what comes out when I try to inject some energy, because aside from this, uh, my only natural voice would be an incredibly monotone and mumbly. And, and I might end up reverting to that as we get deeper into this massive thing. Uh, anyway, to answer the question, I grew up in Vancouver, BC, Canada. 
A, but the West Coast is less of the A in the boot than the East. Apple or orange juice? As a kid, it was 100% apple, no question, but I would guess that's pretty common because it's sweeter and no pulp or anything. As an adult, maybe I would like orange, no clue. I haven't had juice in like 15 years. Water gang. And then what inspired me to do the YouTube thing? Well, I was a young lad in the world of early COD commentary and tip channels, your Woody's Gamer tags and T-Martins, and it just seemed like it'd be fun to be a part, be a peer. I'm all about sharing stuff. I felt like I had something to give, but I'm a very reserved person in real life, so video making was the perfect hobby for me. I eventually got to know Woody through his Minecraft server. I feel like I should do a, a Woodycraft story time someday. That was such a surreal experience. That whole few years feels like a dream looking back. I'm sure 98% of you were not here for the Woodycraft days. It's a bit too much to explain. Big popular server. Uh, kind of got to work behind the scenes as a pseudo admin. We all stream together basically every day. Uh, it was so fun. Anyway, after that ended, I continued with the COD thing. And despite being the worst at promoting myself, started to see some bigger numbers in the early COD World War II. But the original get to know people I watched thing maybe happened too quickly and then also just didn't exist anymore because I looked around and did not really care about or like any of the popular content styles anymore. Uh, so I just did my own thing for a while until that all got too negative. Uh, I'm sure I'm about to get into that, so I'll just hold off on that talk. Uh, after a year of existential crisis about what the hell I was even doing if I wasn't trying to grow the channel and now I'm just having some fun dabbling in the positivity of old CODs and personal projects. It keeps me busy, so I'm liking it. Maybe I'm just distracting myself until the next crisis inevitably creeps up, but uh, hey, that's life. And then where do I see myself in five years? Oh my God, dude, I have no clue. <laughs> maybe I figured some stuff out, maybe not. Uh, so far, I've spent a lot of time making sure to check the basic boxes of being able to live comfortably, set up for the future. Now I just need to keep searching for what it is that makes me happy. What is fulfilling? Not always an easy answer. All right, as our first big topic, only natural, we start with the could something bring me back to COD? which I'll kind of combine with any kind of plans for the channel going forward stuff. Um, I guess that is the most normal question to ask a YouTube channel after all. And I appreciate that some of you are down for anything. Thank you. And I understand those who are not. Uh, for the first part of a COD return, you might be expecting a no megalol, but I sometimes wonder about it. As the memory of the negativity starts to fade away, it gradually feels like more of a novelty. Like, yeah, it would be funny to go back, check in. It's been a whole year with no contact. What's been going on here? Oh, everyone still hates it? Cool. Uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, I can't really see it being the same type of full COD coverage, but I could see making some type of videos with a new COD game, yeah. I don't need to rehash the reasons for leaving it too much, but uh, how quick can I to summarize it? Let's see. It was going down a road that I didn't find fun anymore. The multiplayer felt increasingly artificial with zero transparency, which was frustrating. With a huge focus on store exclusive stuff, which makes me more bored than even your standard live service store. And then on the progression side, as someone who paid very close attention to it, it felt like it was inconsistent at best, manipulative at worst, for years, which coincided with all the other algorithm-based approaches. Uh, the seasonal formula when applied to COD was just not fun for me, and I understand why it went that way. Uh, but all that combined, on top of how negative the community always was with this stuff, just made for a thoroughly pointless and frustrating experience on all fronts that I was very tired of. I don't mean to sound overdramatic, uh, it just seemed like there was nothing left there for me. I've also just done it all before, a lot. Uh, making the videos is what kept the interest alive for as long as it did over the years, feeling like I was helping or entertaining people in some way. But also, of course, covering the game for a decade can amplify the fatigue because it feels like I have to defend it to justify continuing to play it, uh, like I was representing the game, and that becomes tough to do when you agree with a lot of the reasons causing everyone you know to dislike the game. Uh, just so much negativity makes it feel dumb and pointless to attempt to make any normal fun stuff. Which really takes its toll, unless you're content to just cash in on the rage bait. Because, yeah, there's an audience for that, but it's an audience that wants you to continue to dump on things, and that sounds miserable. Ultimately, I was just totally out of things to cover that I felt made sense to cover. And, yeah, I haven't kept up. I have no clue what's going on in Codland, and that feels pretty good. Yeah, the thing about fully returning to a modern Cod is that part one would be thinking the game looks fun. Part two would be somehow shifting back into that type of content mindset, which feels very unlikely right now, because aside from the game, 
I was also worn out on what felt like making the same dozen videos every year, the same camo advice, which was becoming less relevant as more and more channels cover things faster than I do, or the general COD audience just cares about different things than I do, given the same three opinions on a loop to the point of hating myself for it. Like as if my opinion was just so important that it needed to be heard. I know it's not that serious, it's just entertainment. Like, I enjoy watching other people talk about the games I play. It's cathartic to hear what you agree with be said. I uh, usually strove for balance, seeing both sides. That was fun to sometimes go against the Reddit hive mind or whatever and people start parroting buzzwords. I was fine with being the annoying contrarian realist, but uh, it was clearly just becoming too negative post-2019. Not fun. And I think it would eventually not be cathartic anymore, just annoying for everyone involved. I just wanted to be able to enjoy the game and couldn't do that without ignoring what I thought were problems. Uh, I know I've covered this stuff before, so yeah, I just got to a point where I had no respect for myself or what I was doing. Like being a COD YouTuber. Ugh. As a kid, it was like, yeah, it'd be so cool to be a respected community member talking about the game. People care what you have to say. As an old person, it's like, wow, I hate most YouTubers. I'd rather not be a part of this label and be less of a drain on society. I was never really part of the community anyway. My own fault, I always distanced myself, preferred to do my own thing. It wasn't monotony to reference one of the questions because I'm down for some monotony. That can come with safety and comfort as well. But it wasn't monotony. It was more of a soul-crushing hypocrisy. Um, with my upload pace, I've never earned a ton, but uh, yeah, I could have made good money if I just went super hard with the COD coverage, started uh, taking some sponsors for once. Anyway, yeah, it really wasn't as simple as burnout, but it's that whole burnout adjacent discussion that feels lame and whiny to talk about because all those problems sound lame and whiny, so we can skip any more of that. Sometimes people do say they uh, miss the COD thoughts and ask me about MWII or MWIII rumors, and I feel bad saying it, but my honest thoughts are that it's all terribly boring and I do not care. Anything else would be lying. I feel like I gave all my thoughts and doing any more of that would just be repeating a lot of the gripes I already repeated for three years and that just doesn't make for fun videos. Modern Warfare 3, bro. For real. So, kind of backtracking the two-year game thing. Or is it going to work as an expansion? Uh, did they just mean we're sticking with Modern Warfare as opposed to flipping to something else entirely? Sorry, I do not know the details. I guess Warzone is basically the game now, so... Yeah, just plop a new map in there, you're good. It's so unimportant, but I, I can't help but think reusing the names is cringe. Well, they learned their lesson with Vanguard. Basically, the same game. Just a, a setting people didn't care about. Uh, I can't shake the image of that goofy-ass price skin. That's not how you get me with nostalgia bait. I remember liking those characters. Get that out of my face. You could have got me by remastering the game, but uh, I don't even want that anymore. Just let it rest. All that aside, video-wise, uh, I'm just not the rush to cover news guy anymore, which I feel like I would need to be. As a younger lad, I felt like I needed to be on top of the cool new stuff to cover every bit of hype COD news. Not even because I thought it would mean more views, I just was excited. I felt like I needed to show off that I had the inside scoop. I got stressed if I were missing out on anything. I gotta talk about this new trailer right away, this new info. Well, I'd say that's been far too saturated for a long time. Uh, plus, when I grew to care less about the news, because I've seen it all before, it's easy to feel like, well, surely other people don't care about this either. And I would always end up deciding uh, many things just aren't worth covering because I had nothing to say, nothing to add, when in reality people just want to hear you talk about it anyway. My standard for what was worth a video kept getting stricter. And I am slow, which is the opposite of what makes for successful game coverage. I obsess over details and proof watch too many times. I'm just not a match for that type of content, probably never was. And the best way to do that is to be first, rush it out the door. Accuracy be damned sometimes, and I'm too bothered by mistakes. Hell, people have teams for this stuff now that source and script, or they're just good at covering a topic live and can trim that down into videos at a breakneck pace. I'm a dinosaur who just makes stuff by myself, and I'm not full of myself or delusional. I know I just make gaming videos. It's not like it was ever the level of production value that would stand out. So those two things combined, not really the YouTube gaming meta and... I refuse to adapt because I would feel cringe doing whatever, making shorts with colorful text popping up on the screen. Uh, adapting is kind of important though. I guess I've always been a meta hater. I should have done some 2011 sub for sub, some fake giveaways, that's the trick. I might actually enjoy being part of a, a content team like that, just helping out behind the scenes and not be the face. Yeah, I'm not looking for any help or anything, thank you. Uh, sometimes I get offers. Uh, I'm way too much of a control freak. Anyway, uh, these days I know the uploads are pretty slow and I can understand longing for the old days. Uh, was COD World War II a uh, sour golden age? BO3, MWR? I don't know. I look back on that fondly too. When I was never without purpose, I belonged. 
but those days could only exist because the game was interesting to me. I was passionate about learning various tips and tricks. That was, and is the only way I know how to make videos. I'm interested in something about the game and I could justify the time and research to test it or look into it because I could share it with others, which maybe is good to be genuine, but a huge weakness because as soon as I stop caring about something, it's hard for me to imagine that other people still care when in reality they definitely do and I'm just no longer giving people what they want. I could use any number of SEO tools to see what my audience is searching for and do that, but I'd just be lost if I'm trying to cover something that I don't actually care about. And you might have the wholesome view of, well, yeah, that's good, because the lack of passion will always shine through. Eh, it's showbiz, baby. Most of the YouTubers you watch are faking and enjoying something, and you can't tell. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't ruin the magic. Uh, I'm not trying to throw stones either. It's just an impressive work ethic. I do miss making scripted guides and things like that, though. I think that's what I'm better at by a lot. I'm not a let's player. I don't think I'm good at that. There's always a bit of imposter syndrome with those because people seem to enjoy them. I refuse to believe whenever I see the most insane compliment of like, this is my favorite series on YouTube. You know, there's so much insane quality on this site, right? Yeah, I felt more at home with making guides, but it's kind of all or nothing. You're either the information guy or the entertainer guy, and I've been out of the guide game for so long, I don't even know how to step back into that. It just feels wrong. Like, who even really wants that from me? I was getting so much. I don't even play COD anymore, but I still watch. And It's not like I actually want to do that, to be clear, because I still don't have any topics that I want to cover. Just speaking generally that I was better with scripted stuff. And maybe the perfect middle ground is doing the partially scripted story style like the DMZ thing. But for tips these days with the level of competition that falls into the same category as news coverage with how you have to be fast. You need to get your tips out the door right away with a juicy title. I don't know. Uh, too bad. I did love the niche of feeling helpful, providing a resource, being part of a game people were enjoying. And when that faded and I just felt annoying, I have enjoyed the move to making videos that are not so time sensitive. Kind of dumb to not be tapping into what people are searching for and caring about, but uh, my channel has always been a terrible business. I still often set deadlines for myself, but it's nice to not be rushing the stuff out the door same day, half-baked, like some kind of season roadmap breakdown. Who cares? Oh, two new operators and a fan favorite map remake. No way. <laughs> it's, it's cool to make stuff that stays relevant or stays irrelevant, I guess. I just mean a playthrough of a game will be the same 10 years from now. I will find it very cringe, as I do all my videos as soon as they're out the door, but that's a me problem. <laughs> that's just how it works, because every public video on the channel still feels like it represents me and my views, when in reality, you change as a person. So hearing old me is like, oh god, that, that's what I thought? Why did I care about that? Why did I sound so serious? That, that was my sense of humor? What? And people are judging me still based on that person. I know to resist privating everything, though. It's history. Uh, there is some pretty funny cringe out there, though. Uh, one of my favorites is saying something like, T. Martin's a good guy. He gets too much hate just because he's popular. Literally four days before the CSGO Lotto stuff broke. Man, good one, Sour. I will also say that I miss short videos. <laughs> short being like under half an hour, uh, but more like under 10 minutes even. Wow, imagine. Uh, it was fun to post more, be more engaged with people. These days, literally every upload is like, oh my god, he's back. Meanwhile, I'm like, I didn't go on vacation. I've just been doing this. Uh, long videos can be somewhat of a pain, but overall it works for me. Less intro and outro, thumbnails, all that. And it's more satisfying to just put something out that's simple entertainment that just exists. I know some people go back and rewatch irrelevant COD coverage videos. Y'all wild for that. It can be nostalgic, I guess. But I've strayed from the question as I want to do. As far as video plans, um, I don't have any hard plans that go that far into the future. Well, at my pace of like maybe one video a month, I guess I'm good for at least another year. But someday I could just run out. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot I could do, but I mean, for now, I've got a handful of CODs I can play through and then some challenge runs I could come up with for the games that I played as a kid but have no playthrough recorded of. It can be fun to revisit more nostalgic childhood games in that format. Uh, I do like to alternate with the classic CODs because it feels too predictable to do nothing but that. And there is a limited number of them. Uh, but after those, I suppose there are the classic COD adjacent games that I could play, like the old Medal of Honor being basically the COD predecessor. I've seen that requested a bunch, even outside the Q&A questions. Then if I were to take another step further, uh, for example, I have no experience with the Halo franchise or story at all. Uh, that could be interesting. Someone actually did mention that as well in a question. Uh, going even further to just any random shooters that people always say are good, like 
Titanfall 2, for example. I played a bunch of the first Titanfall multiplayer, never touched the sequel, but uh, I don't know the interest level in all that as we get further away. Uh, could just see how that goes. Like for something I'm passionate about, like a childhood game or the once a year Destiny thing, I just like making it regardless. I know that it'll be niche for my audience, but it's fun for me to share. For something like a huge chopped up Halo playthrough that I don't have an innate passion for, yeah, it'd be neat to play, but that's a lot of work if not that many people are gonna care. So I don't know, uh, maybe someday it's worth trying at least one of each thing. I also remember always saying, uh, hey, maybe that SM2 fan project comes out at some point. Uh, that being a huge mashup of tons of CODs built on Modern Warfare 2. The actual, uh, original Modern Warfare 2, obviously. And yeah, I could have some fun with that. But I heard about those projects finally getting hit with the cease and desists. Who knows if they carry on in any kind of underground form. Uh, it really sucks, obviously, for all that tons of work never getting to be fully realized and appreciated. I sadly can't say I'm shocked, though. I remember my very first reaction upon seeing it was, wow, this is crazy impressive. But how is Activision going to let this exist if it gets even remotely popular? Uh, anyway, that sucks. Then it's funny to see the 100% predictable reactions. Screw Activision! Boycott time! Bro, where you been? <laughs> Did you like Activision before this? So this is the thing that got you to care. Okay. Uh, you're not going to get a boycott going. You only look foolish like every game boycott ever. The COD player base is way bigger than you. And if this actually matters to you beyond empty Twitter threats, simply don't play the game. For real, don't just say you won't, because aside from not playing, you have no recourse. Will it make a difference? Unlikely. But at least you're not playing it anymore. And wow, I can finally grandstand about that, because I actually don't play the game. Feels good. Anyway, who knows what the future holds. Maybe some new game drops that I just love, with a balance of casual fun and meaningful progression, where I jump in on the ground floor and become all about it. It feels like extraction is the growing trend, though, and I haven't been crazy about that stuff so far. It's possible. It is tough to picture jumping into full coverage for any single game. Uh, that just seems weird. Uh, even aside from the whole not a news guy thing, it just seems pretty audience alienating to go all in on one single game where it's not even an entertainment angle where you could watch it. It's like if you don't play the game, you're not going to care about the tips. I probably have to experiment with making new channels if I actually wanted to do that. That is how you avoid making YouTube think you suck. But uh, my motivation is low to restart the YouTube process when I already ended up learning here that I don't even like too much of a spotlight, so what would be the goal? Grow another channel to this level and stop again? <laughs> I feel like I could do it with everything I've learned, but uh, yeah, I like where I'm at in the journey. It's awesome that so many people have enjoyed the classic COD stuff, though. That's been a pretty shocking response. Thank you. Uh, every time I'm like, okay, this is the one that nobody will care about. <laughs> Apparently not yet. Uh, it's neat to experience the games, and it's even neater to see people loving, reliving their nostalgia. Uh, so much positivity compared to the days of COD complaining and sadness. Makes it very enjoyable, like being thanked for showcasing people's favorite childhood games. It makes me afraid I'm not doing them justice. Anyway, I'm sure I could enjoy making more COD-related content if I get creative enough, like a DMZ revisit someday. Long-ass topic, yeah, a couple of these will be like that, but... The whole point of this video is to talk for a long time, so it's fine. I only get one of these every couple of years at this rate, gotta make it count. And besides, my niche these days is apparently making absurdly long videos to put on in the background. Alright, compensate for the length of that, it's lightning round time! Did they ever fix the counter MVP challenge in MWR? I doubt it, man. Uh, maybe, someone tell me. Uh, outcome? Try and go boom. Are you a furry? Uh, only ironically, I swear. Feet reveal when? Uh, check my OnlyFans. Why does that have upvotes? Fortnite. I've never played Fortnite. Can you whistle? I guess so. I can't do the finger thing. Why are you so damn sexy? Uh, you play any Milsom games? I'm sorry, I have not. Uh, do you have a girlfriend? Nope, never will. Uh, whiskey or gin? Uh, never been drunk, never been high. Uh, can you be- Oh, can you be my father? Uh, maybe I am. I mean, no, sorry. Uh, surely not everyone was kung fu fighting, right? Uh, well, I would assume that they were, perhaps within an implied and unspecified location, but uh, you'll have to take that up with Mr. Douglas. Uh, farthest you ever got with a cousin? <laughs> not knowing any, thankfully? Okay, let's move on. Since we're doing all the COD talk, kind of related here, that I figured would come up. X Defiant, have you checked that out? It's gonna play. Uh, so far, I have not done any serious checking out of X Defiant. If you're unfamiliar, it's an Ubisoft arcade shooter that looks to be competing with the casual COD experience in many ways. I've heard about them fixing many of the common pain points that the passionate online COD fans often bring up. 
Uh, sounds like they're being more open about all those issues. It'd be silly to call anything a cod killer. You're not stealing everyone away from the giant casual base. But I imagine it's trying to attract some disgruntled cod refugees and could very well succeed to some degree. It sounds like people seem to enjoy it so far. Personally, I wish them well with that. I do. It sounds like a cool mission, but I'm not that drawn into the gameplay loop. And it's not their fault. I played a simple repetitive arcade shooter for over a decade and I enjoyed many things about it. But as I mentioned, the video making quickly became my main sense of purpose. I would enjoy earning a camo or a challenge because I could then share those tips. I enjoyed grinding every World War II reticle because it was chill and, and then I could make a dumb video about what a stupid thing I did. It was fun to turn the game into a creative hobby. Uh, the thing is, even with many pain points addressed, I can't imagine getting into that same video niche as I was saying before, and the arcade shooter loop by itself is just not exciting to me. Like, I looked up some footage to know what it looked like, and just watching someone run around to get a few kills and die on repeat is like, where are the stakes? Why do these kills and deaths matter? Who cares? I'm not trying to diss it, I know the answer to the question of why does this matter is different for everyone. Like, oh, why does anything matter? Uh, the answer is personal and 100% based on what you care about. That's just what I see. I'm sure there will be some investment progression stuff that might feel engaging. I know it's beta footage and all, but I just have no motivation to get into a game like that in the first place. The gameplay loop does not entice me. I think that's why BR got so big and now shifting into extraction stuff. There are stakes. There's tension. Your kills and deaths have a greater impact. There's time invested or gear invested or both and there's often strong team play involved. Once you get a taste for that, it's hard to care about a mindless meat grinder multiplayer. It just looks like aim practice to me. And I'm not even a big BR guy, just using that as an example of stakes. I'm sure it's also partially getting older and taste changing. Like if that type of chill MP is your thing, if you just wanna push yourself to do better each game, master every weapon, stuff like that, go wild. Uh, I was never the type of person to care about KD ratio or anything though, so I never partied up with friends to get some dom wins, to get my win loss up, so maybe that's why it's not for me. Uh, I was only ever the challenge completionist guy, and my favorite stuff right now tends to be challenging co-op PvE, or despite not being that competitive, like I would never play comp PvP alone, I could get invested in anything with strong team play. Like how I'm not crazy into BRs or extractions, but I could at least enjoy getting into that with some people, or even like returning to CS after five years where at least what I'm doing in each game feels like it matters to the team. I don't know, that's fun. So it looks like an interesting game. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, it could be good. Uh, if enough people really want me to try it out, I could do that. I'm not super opposed. It could be fun as a novelty, but I'm not imagining that I'd have much to say that I don't already know by watching. And a tiny related add-on, can traditional FPS games ever reach the same level of popularity? Well, I'm no fortune teller, and I don't feel like what I like generally represents the majority of people. Uh, someone said look at BattleBit. Maybe that's a fun, innovative twist. Uh, I guess it depends on what you consider traditional. Trends come and go. Eventually it might be cyclical and there's a resurgence. Maybe X Defiant does well. Who knows? That's all I got. Sorry. Do you think movies have gotten worse or people just have more entertainment options? I don't think it's fair to say movies have gotten worse. It's the same for saying music is all terrible and formulaic these days. Yeah, a lot of it is, but you can cherry pick good and bad music or movies from any time period. The most popular stuff nowadays is pretty much by definition going to be some pretty formulaic, broad appeal thing. That's probably gonna happen at least one more time. Yeah, there are good movies still being made. You maybe just haven't heard of them because all the discourse is around the latest trash-ass reboot that everyone hates. And uh, yeah, that is a sad trend of remaking and rebooting everything because it sells. It's way easier to be like, hey, you've heard of Jurassic Park? You should check out this. A lot more people are gonna be like, well, let's see what they did to it. Uh, it's a lot harder to get someone to check out or care about something they've never heard of. Word of mouth only goes so far. And it is true that there's a lot of free entertainment. You have an endless feed of bite-sized curated addiction to scroll through in your pocket at all times. At least it feels like people are uh, finally getting over Marvel, like most people stopped caring after Endgame. It was fun for a bit, but uh, it's only gotten worse, it sounds like. I do not pay much attention, though. I really don't watch many movies at all. Uh, in fact, I've seen far more classic movies than recent movies. But now and then I hear about there being some bangers. They exist. I don't feel qualified to list them for you because I haven't actually watched them. Like the most recent for me would be the, that Everything Everywhere All at Once was great. Saw that. And that leads to favorite movies. Uh, as a kid, it was always the first Matrix movie. And I was young enough to like the second one too because some of that action is pretty cool. Uh, now, I mean, all favorite questions are tough because I've seen a lot more. And different movies are trying to do different things. How can I rank... Shrek and Shawshank on the same scale. They're good. I could just still say Matrix or uh, Terminator 2. There you go. The ultimate action movie. Let's just knock out some favorites. Do you have a favorite breakfast? Uh, I am generally a breakfast skipper. Yeah, 
And most breakfast foods are just desserts. Like cereal is a good dessert. When I was like 17, 18, uh, still a bit chubby, like 190, 200 pounds. Not crazy chubby because I was like 6'4", but I wanted to drop the skinny fat thing. So I was doing the uh, like 48 hour keto fasting stuff, which it was pretty funny. It makes any meal just delicious. A crappy frozen burger patty with an egg on top and a dash of salsa. Oh my God, pure bliss. And it's as if that permanently rewired my food drive. To this day, sometimes I only eat dinner. I just don't get hungry all day. But my most common day would be get up around nine, get to work, then anywhere noon to three, I might get a little hungry and make my trademarked oatmeal that I copied from my dad. It's just some frozen fruit, maybe a mango blueberry, maybe a generic mix, boil some water, dump in some plain oatmeal, you're done. No sugar, hell no. Of course, I loved those sweet oatmeal packets as a kid, but God, those are terrible value. And now I've gotten to a point where I honestly think adding sugar is gross. There you go. It's a hearty, filling midday meal that feels good because it doesn't feel like it's compounding with my sedentary lifestyle to give me a heart attack. I've eaten that almost every day for like two years now and I haven't gotten tired of it. It just works. It's easy to stock up on. Don't have to think about making it. I got things to do. Uh, for dinner, I'll make something more interesting, tastier. There's much more variety there. Don't worry. Not that crazy. And a favorite cereal? Um, could be anything, really. Favorite camo ever unlocked? Uh, Advanced Warfare Royalty. Hitting paladins with the Maz and Mayhem just filled me with so much pride and accomplishment. No, I think uh, Exclusion Zone from MWR. It's a pretty basic challenge system. Tons of headshots and then a little bit of variety, which I feel like didn't take away from the gameplay too much. Just a fun, long-term background goal to encourage using all the weapons. If I recall, I finished earning it in the same game that I hit Prestige 20, which I didn't even plan outside of maybe a few games of using some DLC weapons to delay it. Perfect. And I liked how it looked too. I liked that it was animated, but still subtle. Like going the BO3 Dark Meta route is fine too, but I like a little subtle. It also managed to stay a secret for me for a long time. I never saw it spoiled in a video. I guess because Infinite Warfare took a lot of the attention. I remember seeing someone using it, some green cracked glowing gun on Bog a month or two after launch picking it up and be like, what the hell is this gamma? My favorite music? I don't have a cool answer for this, like some niche band music interest. Uh, I'm pretty sure my parents did the play classical music for you as a baby thing, so maybe thanks to that. I do love it when I hear it. Not like I spend time seeking it out though. I can't name you my favorite pieces. Um, after that, I grew up with classic rock more than anything, despite being 25, because that's what was playing in the car when we went places. That's what my mom was blasting. So I do like all your basic Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Queen, Pink Floyd, Rolling Stones, Eagles, you get it. And uh, no doubt many groups that I've never even learned the names of, despite liking some of the music. That said, I honestly never seek out normal music because music with lyrics is the middle ground of being too distracting if I need to focus on work, but not distracting enough if I'm working outside or playing a game where I could just watch a show. Also, I'm clearly on the spectrum, so I really only ever listen to game soundtracks. I guess that's what I really grew up with and uh, modern soundtracks can be orchestral masterpieces. Like, oh, this is where all the modern composers went. So I guess my favorite musicians are all those guys. Your Lorne Balfe and Hans Zimmers, your Michael Salvatore, Sky Lewin, and the Bungie Boys pumping out banger after banger. Uh, someone did ask about soundtracks too. And for COD, I mean, it's literally Modern Warfare 2. I'm afraid that is simply the correct answer. Yes, there are many bangers from other games. Uh, some of the motifs from the older games are still stuck in my head, like the uh, COD 1 Russian music. And newer games too, everyone loves the Black Ops 2 menu theme, and even Vanguard, despite being Vanguard, had uh, Bear McCreary, I think he did the God of War stuff, and I liked it before I knew that. But as an entire soundtrack, and uh, story integration, which amplifies the soundtrack, like, come on. And then if I'm picking another game, yeah, it's Destiny, it's insane. I won't elaborate because there's a good amount of Destiny talk coming later. Nintendo has an unholy number of bangers, obviously, but I kind of avoid listening to stuff that's too nostalgic, because a lot of the time, I don't want to feel, I just want to get hyped up. Do you have a favorite anime? Uh, yeah, the Japanese dub of Better Call Saul. Uh, sorry, I'm not an anime watcher at all. I'm sure there's plenty of quality out there, just never got into it. Uh, the YouTube hobby can be pretty all-consuming. I literally just watched Breaking Bad last year. I guess I did watch the first season of One Punch Man when that came out, because it was funny, good satire. And I had a friend make me watch AOT, which I get the gist that that's the most basic thing to ever say. Oh my god, cringe. But... I don't care. And yeah, it was good. It was fun. Favorite time of year. Uh, well, it's too cold here in the winter, too hot in the summer. So it's got to be that perfect little bit of spring weather around April, May. Uh, time of day in general, I guess just the morning. You got the whole day ahead of you. Favorite cup size. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good size. Respectable. Uh, I honestly never use cups, though. I guess you call that a glass. Uh, just got my one liter bottle here. Uh, carry that around with me. Thoughts on the political and economic state of the world. Uh, going pretty great, right? That's what I hear. 
Uh, yeah, I'm blissfully ignorant. I don't see any news feed from anywhere. Uh, politic wise, it's way too exhausting to watch people purposefully not attempt to understand each other just to be mad and feel good about themselves. Like, they've got the righteous answers and other points of view are evil. I just want to grill, live and let live. I respect you living your best life if you ain't harming anyone. The world's always going to have terrible things going on, but there are good people out there. Uh, the only time I hear about terrible stuff going on is when someone tells me and I'm like, why did you tell me this? Now I'm mad about some injustice or people being stupid that I cannot do anything to change. I'm definitely not going to be out there debating. I'm not built to handle that much conflict. That is not the life for me. And uh, yeah, money's a bit fucked this generation, but I don't have any expensive tastes. I hate spending. I just save and invest everything and live simply. Like one game is my entire entertainment budget all year. Now, yeah, last time I was on the bread making arc. I still do that. It is frugal and tasty. Uh, lately, I've been on the farming arc. Uh, when it all collapses, got to be ready, right? Uh, not really, but we got some vegetable boxes going, been planting random stuff. Like even I took the seeds out of some grocery store peppers. They've been doing surprisingly well. I got a range of lettuces, spinach, beets, uh, the potatoes are going crazy right away. Uh, snap peas, too many of those. Lately, the cucumber plants have been popping off and it has made dozens of the things. My expectations were not that high. It's crazy. Like, did you know you could put stuff in the ground and water it and you get more food? Infinite food glitch? Does everyone know about this? I gotta get the word out. Can you believe it, guys? Agriculture. So uh, that's another skill in the Q&A series. What do we have so far? Uh, we did hunter and cooking. Uh, a bunch of wood cutting and fire making happened off screen. Uh, now farming. Uh, what's next? Fishing? Strength arc? What was the question about? I forget. Hello, Mr. Seabass, with the traditional Q&A references. Do Pokemon stand up to wipe? I don't even think they poop. I don't know. Uh, World War II reference. Uh, I guess I gotta fill that in for you. A bomb has been planted on our ammo supply. And the plants on the island. Yeah, those shrubs slash trees that got planted on that island ages ago, they're probably gone. Uh, I gotta check in on them soon this summer. Uh, last year, I think one was dried up and one was okay, but hadn't really grown much at all, and the long grass around it went crazy, so it was hard to even find it. Uh, yeah, my farming level was not high enough for trees back then. I had to start with the allotments closer to home, so. Are you excited about any upcoming games? I tend to be boring when it comes to games, and the answer would normally be no. Uh, right now, I am actually low-key excited about Pikmin 4. I have to imagine not very many of you care at all. Not exactly Nintendo's biggest franchise, but I did enjoy the first two that I played as a kid. Such satisfying gameplay, collecting stuff. It is very cool. Shout out based Pikmin enjoyers. What really makes me excited about it though is the prospect of somehow turning it into a video. I don't have any clue how that'll work because with a COD campaign, it's like do commentary for 10 hours and then trim it down to three. With this, it could be 50, 100 hours. I have no clue. So it would be a, a faster pace, highlights and, and more fast forwarding recap stuff. Uh, the challenge of figuring out how to make that though is part of the fun. Unfortunately, it comes out soon, so I would have to work on that next, which means if you count this one, that's two videos between classic CODs, and I kind of feel bad about that, because all the comments from people who really want to see the next one, but I mean, there aren't too many left. We'll get to it, I promise. I can do a back-to-back -back CODs to make it up to you. How about that? Maybe three in a row. Anyway, recording it and making it into something is usually what gives single-player games a fun purpose to me. I like to share stuff but uh, I know I'll be diving deeper on that in a bit. So we'll move on for now. Thoughts on making Pokemon content aside from streaming it? Yes, thank you, Dirt, for your overly generous sub patronage of my Twitch channel that I use twice a year. Hey, anyone who doesn't use Twitch, wanna give me your Twitch Prime? I don't like taking anyone's actual money, but I love free money. Uh, yeah, Pokemon, I uh, haven't had any plans to thus far. If you're unaware, I generally play through new Pokemon stuff when it comes out as a rare Twitch stream thing, but those are uh, <laughs> pretty rough games recently. That's a shame. Uh, I just have a huge history of watching Pokemon content over the years, which has given me an abnormal amount of knowledge despite hardly playing any of the games up until now. I did get into some VGC, the official competitive format, in the couple seasons after Scarlet and Violet. I made some teams, I uh, used some rentals, and I went 16 to 5 to get into Master Ball tier, the highest tier. Pretty proud of that. Uh, I know it's not hard to get into Master Ball for anyone who plays the game, but it just basically says, yeah, I know how to play the game. I went to the Vancouver Regionals as my first event. I did manage to top cut. Just kidding, I wasn't competing. I just wanted to check it out. Uh, maybe if it wasn't the same weekend as the day one raid, I would have considered entering for the meme. I'm really not that competitive of a person though. I enjoy gimmick team building that subverts an expectation that might make someone laugh. I don't care about consistency. Like if you know the game, uh, my shell smash Torkoal entrainment Lilligant, uh, absolutely terrible. 
or my triple ape team. You see, uh, usually Annihilate here is the one getting beat up on to, to boost the power of a move, but he's tired of it. So now he's beating up a prime ape with scope lens, get a crit, anger point, max attack, nothing is living that. Uh, all right, sorry, those words made no sense to basically everyone. I did consider making a weird video out of some of that stuff, but it was just too weird, way too much explaining to do. Yeah, I can't see sharing the uh, interest in competitive, but playthrough wise, uh, well, I do want to try making that one thing for Pikmin since it's a one and done. I know interest will be low, but uh, I guess if I end up enjoying editing something in that format, I could do it for a new Legends game or something. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands half the time. If it looks like I'm doing something weird, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, thoughts on people saying the next COD will suck and still buying it, complaining about the same things. Yeah, it's cringe. Uh, I get it because I've been there. I did that once and it was cringe. Uh, <laughs> it was a loop that was more difficult for me to leave because people expected me to cover the game and I still found enjoyment in that part. But for everyone else, you really should be leaving. Uh, I think it's easy to explain though. Many people just want to voice their complaints about a game that they're passionate about. And that is simply the most dramatic way to do that. Phrase it as some kind of threat that you're going to leave and as if that's going to get them to listen to you when you maybe don't actually mean it and you're still wanting to play regardless. Or maybe you do actually mean it to some degree, but then get caught up in a hype cycle believing that this is the time it'll be different because insert reason, it's different studio. Uh, or they said this, which means they learned their lesson from that. Uh, yeah, well, oh, oh, well, no big deal. And am I going to try Genshin Impact? Uh, honestly, I didn't even think it was a mobile game. I don't know anything about the monetary gotcha nature of it outside of hearing people say that about it. Uh, I don't need to know because I'm mega turned off by the weeby nature of it. Sorry, <laughs> just the total opposite of what I would want to play, but I hope you enjoy. Oh, hey, uh, it's really not any of my business, but you should really lay off the Genshin Impact. Or I'm gonna have to tell Uncle Hank. And prefer Coke or Sprite? I guess Coke, but I've almost never had either, TBH. All right, got a mini list here. Ideal FPS. Okay, well, avoid talking too much Destiny because that is coming, but uh, I mean, basically to start with Destiny 2, but to focus on adding some deeper social MMO elements and content that stays in the game, figure out the technical side there, as opposed to the boring seasonal formula. And also ship a sick over delivery that makes people not hate you for a little bit. Uh, then maybe you thought I would say that because then my favorite Destiny Guns Environments characters, uh, not a ton to say there. I think it's fun to be a defender of sidearms, but uh, Double Special is too good right now. Mostly this stuff, uh, Meta Slave and uh, my lifetime usage, I guess. Environments got to be the Dreaming City and Last Wish aesthetic. It was my introduction to the game. Naturally going to love that. Characters got to be Savathun. Great character, great buildup, great voicing. Uh, any thoughts on Payday 2? Uh, I think I got it for free in some Christmas promotion like a long ass time ago. So that was pretty cool. I don't think I ever actually downloaded it though. So sorry, no thoughts. Uh, I'm surprised it's been supported so much and kept alive. I do sometimes hear people in my Discord playing it. And favorite Pokemon game idea. I mean, I really like what they did with Legends Arceus, but I am a Sinnoh simp. I do like the traditional online battling though. And Gen 9 in some ways was a good hybrid, but in other ways a disaster, like the performance obviously. And it's sad to see such a massive franchise phone it in for many parts of the game because they can. Uh, it could be so much greater. Uh, it also sucks to never be able to care about the MMO-like grind or shinies or whatever because it's so easy to cheat and gen stuff in. Anyway, I guess take Legends Arceus but add some kind of fun online multiplayer aspect that keeps the interest alive longer. Some kind of co-op challenging stuff. I don't know. Did I ever go for Zombies Achievements? One of my favorite maps and Easter eggs. Well, I did the BO4 100%er challenge if you consider that achievements. Uh, same with tons of Cold War challenge stuff. I'm not a cultured zombies guy though. I felt like saving a round three crawler while you go do tentacle chores for 20 minutes to turn on the power every game was stupid. Uh, I generally like the old stuff. Uh, my favorite map is probably just Kino. Mega simple. I could run around that stage for hours. I remember thinking Shangri-La was super sick when it came out. Uh, Ascension 2. Uh, Black Ops 1 was clearly just when I was the most into zombies. And uh, Easter eggs, I can't even remember that many. But for some reason, the only one that came to mind right away was the moon one, where you could watch the earth blow up. I guess that was impactful. Uh, you can call that the peak of my Easter egg interest. What turned me off DMZ? The latest missions are unique and enjoyable. That's good to hear. Uh, yeah, all my in-depth thoughts are in that video. There was just no long-term progression that I cared about. The challenges were kind of a mess and the missions just... I don't know, where did they go? Uh, you really never got better gear that you could hold on to or sell. You never built up any hideout or base or hoarded your treasure outside of the matches. It was a bunch of surface level missions that didn't feel like they went anywhere. It's cool sandbox though. I could see revisiting it for sure. See what's changed. Uh, the other thing is it's a game that's fun with friends or fun if I'm creating something and there's nobody telling me to hop on DMZ. But 
Yeah, I could see you doing that one year update. Could be fun. Uh, do I still play Pogo? Uh, not really. No. Uh, like maybe once a month I remember to mega evolve all my dudes to level them up just because. Uh, but yeah, the main reason would be it was fun when I was on the university campus. There were raid groups and people who played there. Uh, now I live in a forest, so there's really no reason to engage. There's nothing nearby and I don't even pay for a data plan anymore. I could cheat, but uh, that kind of defeats the purpose. Not really fun. Also though, there's a lot to not like about it if I wanted to take it seriously. Like this is a pretty insane FOMO. She's gotten bigger over the years. Like they have these two day events or even just a few specific hours constantly. Endless tasks that get dumped on you that you need to pay attention to. You gotta log on to claim it in order to fix one of your moves or evolve in this specific window or be forced to wait two years. So I can't even evolve the cool thing I caught because I should wait for someday when it gets a better move. You gotta allow for more freedom with the changing moves. I, just, I don't wanna feel stressed by a game. Screw that, that's not worth engaging with, or keeping track of. Anyway, it was always just a social community game, an incentive to go walk around the park. And it was an exciting concept when it started, but uh, never like a, an actual good game on its own. If I need a mobile game on the go, BTD6, baby, only based mobile game. Have I played any CS? Uh, nothing major. I only played a bit of CSGO. People got me into that, like, from 2014 to 2017, I'd say. And I was never all that good, but I knew the game well enough. I knew all the basic strats and calls, and it was fun. Uh, I could see checking out CS2 if people want to. I was pretty heavy into watching that competitive scene for a couple of years. It was the only esport I ever really cared to watch, unless you count some Pokemon stuff. And it was fun to bet on the matches. I dealt in the skin side more than the game, honestly. And I'm pretty proud of it. I only ever put like a hundred bucks in the game and I have made way more. And uh, betting is not the same as gambling. It's not the, hey guys, I found this new site. Or spin the wheel where the house takes a cut. Betting on the matches can have some knowledge to it. You play the odds and I did win out on that. Even if you lose, it just makes watching it more fun to have skin in the game. Sorry for the pun. Yeah, good old CSGO lounge. Uh, and then I took those profits and made some sick investments. It's such free money. I'm shocked more people don't do it. CSGO has a major tournament. They release stickers. You buy them on sale for like 30 cents and then they never come back. Over the years, supply dries up and they get more expensive. Free money. Uh, this is not financial advice. I think it is harder to do now because the sale period can last for months and some go up more than others, but it's always seemed like such little risk aside from tying up money on Steam for longer than you wanted to. I've done a pretty terrible job, honestly, like dumping all my MLG capsules right before they shot up because they were taking too long and I thought maybe people were never going to like them or something. And then uh, buying into the only other tournament that has not gone up much at all. It still has, but uh, just sad to compare to everything else. Oh yeah, and I sold like a, a Butterfly Fade, a Souvenir Knight, a bunch of knives when I stopped playing because I was afraid that when I wasn't paying attention, they could announce a sequel someday where the skins got left behind. Uh, so I got some money out. Whoops. Those are worth like 10x more. Could buy a car with those things. Man, the old breakout cases are what hurt. Those are cemented in my mind as four cents. Those are just junk that you dump for one or two cents on the market. Because that was when I started playing. If I just got a few thousand of those, it would have been so easy. They were up to eight dollars. Like, good God. Only a casual 20,000% return. No big deal. Uh, anyway, sorry for making everyone, including myself, feel bad. It's done to have investment regret, though. I'm used to it. It's just funny because there's an infinite amount of those missed opportunities. You can't feel bad. Going to talk games in a bit, so I'll wait on that one. Uh, that's my PC somewhere uh, a few years old now. And uh, right before the big AMD takeover, so that was a bit of a whoops, but uh, it does what I need. What's your fetish? Uh, Hand-holding, mutual respect, excellent personal hygiene, being financially responsible. Damn, that's hot. I'm sorry, this is inappropriate talk for YouTube. Uh, what made me play through the old CODs? Well, it felt like an unfinished business type of thing. I played COD games for half my life, but I could only say, yeah, I've played a lot of those. So why not be able to say that I've played every single one? There was also a building curiosity about what COD 1 was like, because I had no clue. And it turned out it was really good. And as a huge bonus, it turned out people liked the videos. So much positive feedback. So it was very motivating to keep going and complete them all. And uh, I already played through those three games you mentioned, but how am I going to play through MWII, I guess? Uh, with the COD security issue, I have no clue what the situation with the security risk is. This was the first I heard of it, and I tried to research it, and I found stuff going back over a year, which makes me think there's some kind of fear-mongering or something going on. Like, what exactly is the issue? I need to know. I couldn't find someone who just told me the concrete problem and how it was discovered. I found tons of posts and commentaries that didn't actually know anything. They're just flying the banner of spread the word, which is fine, I guess, but... I kept scanning through 12 minute videos, hearing about pe what people ate for dinner or apologizing for late uploads or something. Just tell me what the problem is. 
And I know that's rich coming from a video where I'm rambling about nonsense for two hours, but I'm supposed to be, okay? I'm answering questions. I didn't title the video uh, critical information that you need to hear, but good luck finding it. Actually, that is a funny title. I could use that. All I could ever find was stuff like your, your IP could be grabbed, which is kind of nothing new. And they can crash your game, which, yes, it is alarming. Uh, clearly, that is a big problem. But then sometimes people add something else. Like, people can get all your information and hackers can send viruses to your computer. And I'm like... <laughs> What are you even talking about? <laughs> well, as long as you stay away from my mainframe, uh, yeah, cybersecurity is scary, and most people's information is crazy vulnerable. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't believe you. I just need some details on this issue. And if it's truly been that bad for over a year, how are so many people playing just fine, including plenty of high-profile people? Because that seems kind of weird to me. So I do appreciate the warning. Uh, sorry, I'm not directing this at you. I just think it's funny. <laughs> and uh, I also have to assume that I would be okay playing a campaign offline. I don't think Captain Price is going to hit me offline. Um, but someone, please do correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> do you still play RuneScape? And uh, thank you. Alas, uh, I do not. Uh, I still sometimes see a joke about another return to RuneScape. Uh, happy to say I'm free of that. It was a very nostalgia-driven addiction where I'd hear the music, get nostalgic, and try to relive it a bit, schedule a little vacation from reality. And that worked when I only got a couple weeks of the membership at a time and then uh, got back to real life. But then I got that full year of membership with in-game money, of course. And for a while, what gave it purpose was that I would make that big video about it as a tribute to the childhood fun that was had. Finally, max my stats, which isn't that hard these days, but it was symbolic for how many thousands of hours I had in that game over decades. And that was a fun video. After that was done, it kind of felt like mission accomplished, but I still had a few months of membership and I was absolutely just going through the motions. Number go up grind random achievements, stats, for no reason at all, sometimes all day if I had a free day. And it became painfully apparent upon thinking about what I was progressing towards that there was no fulfillment or satisfaction at the end of the tunnel, only shame. And it's not like I'm someone who brands all gaming as worthless. I mean, look at what I've chosen to do with my life so far. But these were not meaningful accomplishments that were skillful or that I was sharing with others. I was not progressing towards anything that I would be proud of looking back. To be clear, if you're genuinely having fun with a game and can balance it with your life, no judgment, have fun. Uh, for me, it was clearly just turning into an addiction since I don't even enjoy the high-end combat of the game, what you might consider the actual gameplay. The dated tick system feels terribly unresponsive to me. I'm sure people who are used to it may defend it as part of the game's identity. And I get it, you can obviously master it. But honestly, even without that, I would still have no interest in the massive ability bar rotation style of game. 30 little icons on the screen, memorize your whole keyboard of hotkeys. Uh, I'm simply a much bigger fan of responsive first person gameplay. That's where I actually feel in control and immersed and able to look around and move freely. Love it. Uh, also, RuneScape being a full on MMO, such a big time sink. There's so much upkeep with some of the high end gear that it feels like a full time job, even as a grind enjoyer personality. I just don't want that. I work for a number in real life. It's not like you earn an upgrade and then you have it, and now you gotta maintain it. Just going in circles, earning to maintain, and, and for what? Way too often it felt like I have to suffer through this task for this reward. But why suffer at all? Uh, also, Jagex has a pretty disgusting track record. Not like any big gaming companies, all sunshine and rainbows. But they did seem to find new ways to degenerate every year. It did feel shameful to be staying. Oh, you think this thing we did is awful? Oh, well. What are you gonna do about it, nerd? Go complain on Reddit, then hop back on the game? Anyway, when I had membership, I felt like I needed to use it. Because that's how I am. I had a list of a couple hours worth of dailies, plus weeklies and monthlies to keep track of that feel too efficient not to do. And if I was at the PC, I always had to be AFKing something on the side, mining, fishing. But it's a five minute kick timer. Even the most AFK thing is not that AFK. It was mentally exhausting in a weird way to always have that going in the background. And it was unhealthy. So the membership ran out and I didn't look back. It was so freeing to finally let go of that. Game is uninstalled. It's not like I'm going to delete my account. Uh, it'll always be part of my history. And the meme is that you never really quit because, you know. It's an addiction. So feel free to joke about that. But I know myself, I'm very confident that'll never happen again. It's a fascinating game, having decades of history, just ancient content lying around, and I had some good times with it. But that childlike feeling cannot be recreated. It is in the past. It's not like I'm stopping myself from getting sucked back in, to be clear. I truly lost interest. So I could easily see you dropping in for a novelty visit someday, maybe in a few more years, when the bad taste eventually goes away. But I will absolutely never have full-time membership again. Got a few questions about what games I've been playing that I'll just use as a jumping off point for all the game talk. Yeah, good rephrase, by the way. It's funny, that question always used to be, what games are you playing aside from COD? Uh, yeah, 
Well, I'm not playing a whole lot, honestly. I hop on Destiny whenever something's going on. You big mainstream game, cringe. Again, why am I so cringe? Uh, yeah, I've never felt like a real gamer who plays cool indie games or the big hot new single player thing that people rave about. Uh, for example, maybe the God of War stuff it sounded really good. I respect it and I can agree it looks well done and yet not care to play it. Like I played Mario Galaxy 15 years ago. Great game, of course. Loved it. And I did play more variety as a kid. I have plenty of nostalgia for a range of genres, but I grew up to be basic as hell. For whatever reason, no matter how perfect a game sounds, zero interest into getting into something that I'll know I'll be done with a couple weeks later. It sounds like a chore. Why would I bother? I don't know why I'm like this. I just can't shake the feeling that I'm wasting my time by collecting tons of things and improving at a game when I know without a multiplayer aspect, my passion for it is not going to last very long at all. Everyone's going to move on except the niche speedrunner crowd. And knowing that means I can never form the passion to begin with. Maybe YouTube brain has broken me because like I was saying, I enjoy single player games if I'm recording it to make it into something that provides a purpose that feels productive because there's a creative element to that. And it's fun to be able to share when something funny happens and save it to be able to look back on it because that does make it feel like it lasts more than the couple weeks. Otherwise, if it's just me alone, it's like, why bother? It doesn't pull me in, which is sad. Uh, maybe that's social media brain rot for you. But at the same time, not really because... It's normal for people to enjoy sharing experiences, and I've always been the type to want to record and document stuff, always the one with the camera in their hands, and like I wouldn't want to go on a vacation by myself. Like I've enjoyed streaming the new Pokemon games, the stream does kind of add to the experience. There was another question exactly about this. What is the main appeal of those big franchise games I play compared to those more self-contained games, I guess. I don't know if you just want to hear a discussion about it or you personally enjoy those games and don't see the appeal of the bigger franchises. And I can totally respect that opinion, like most people do. I know I'm the cringe one. Uh, I just think it's funny that I'm the complete opposite. I mean, Doom looked fun, but still not enough for me to want to play. And uh, like with some of those more story-driven games, most of the time I'd prefer to just watch a movie or watch someone else play it. And I'm not saying the story is bad, just that I don't need to play it. You can look at my history with games. Obviously, I enjoy immersing myself in one big multiplayer game universe that is built to last so that I can invest time into it, become an expert, collect gear, accomplishments, whatever, be a top 1% player, and then I can use that expertise to teach people, to meet people who have this shared interest. It's just what I like. My live service, Andy, I guess, very shameful, I know. Uh, that said, I did have that change in perspective around the time I completed Vanguard when the shipment suffering came to an end. I resolved to be more aware of if something is fun and feels like it has a purpose to me versus number go up uh, or the FOMO feeling of like you have to play something. I hate that. I've cut that out of my life. And I know that's very funny after just having said I play some Destiny because uh, FOMO is a meme there. Uh, more so back when the seasonal content only lasted a season, but... Anyway, calm down, I'll circle back to that. What makes a game worth playing now in my ancient internet age is either it provides a truly new experience, like maybe some cool VR thing that I still have yet to get into, but I look forward to someday. Basically the only genre of game that I have a big excitement for because it has so much potential as such a different experience. Probably with this next generation of headsets, maybe this year, Copium. Uh, so that, or it has a, a social end game, being able to meet people over it or just hang out with friends, play whatever. Like if someone wants to check out CS2, sure, play some party game, golf game, let's do it. As for the stuff I moved on from, well, COD sadly wasn't inspiring joy exactly. The general community sentiment kept getting more and more negative than ever somehow. Uh, no friends had truly cared about it for a while, that's kind of key. I felt like I was their last tether to it, always dragging them back in. Uh, RuneScape's the most obvious example of FOMO over fun in my case, just feeling obligated to be efficient, kind of depressing. I could even reference the Pokemon Go again, too. Yeah, no more FOMO in my life. Why bother? Uh, crazy concept. Play games for fun. If it ever feels like a job to keep track of events and things, get out. So I guess I need to explain why I play some Destiny then, because it is a live service game that by nature wants some of your attention. Well, I simply don't play it for any FOMO reason. I do not feel any need to do things I don't want to do. I ain't making sure to grind out the Iron Banner shader every season or every weapon ornament that I'm not going to use. It doesn't matter. First of all, there's nowhere near as much FOMO as the other games I mentioned. I never feel obligated to get on the game because of a limited time thing, which to me is the definition, like needing to set my calendar to do something at a specific time. You can catch up on stuff all year before some of the content cycles out, and it sucks that it does for new players, but oh well. And I don't touch the core playlist grind. People be like, strikes are boring. Yeah, stop doing them. They were removed from the season content loop a long time ago. There's no need to interact. Those are for new players. I just play what I find fun, like new raid and dungeon stuff, 
check in with the seasonal story, new activities, whatever, farm a gun if I actually care about a new one or two. At this point, I have played a lot of it, so I can recognize a certain level of burnout. I've kind of done it all. I am awake, I'm alive, I just enjoy the game now and then, you know? Recent season story was totally fine, some cool revelations. It was obvious Savathun was going to come back, I'm hyped to finally see it. I also saw a thoughts on the state of destiny question, already been talking about it, so yeah, I'll just tie that in. Uh, right now, people aren't too happy with the increasing server instability, like a few hours of downtime every week, error codes. They have finally talked about it at least, and it's never actually affected me, but yeah, clearly sucks. I hope that improves. Also, the monetization became a hotter topic again. Like, the DLC is a hot mess for a new player figuring out what to buy. The smaller price increases, like going from 10 to 12 for a season, you could just say is inflation, but uh, yeah, the cringe of needing to buy more in-game currency than the cost of a single season, that uh, should clearly be fixed. Uh, all that stuff just hasn't affected me because I buy the deluxe thing once a year and I get plenty of value out of that. But yeah, it's good to bring up those issues. Uh, this year got off to a much weaker start thanks to the main Lightfall story being a letdown filler expansion that really is upsetting after what to me was such a high on that ending Seraph cutscene. Damn. And of course, compared to Witch Queen being a legitimately good story for once. That excellent tone and respect for the universe just thrown away with the infamous Nimbus and Grouchy Osiris. It sounded like they changed their original plan for Lightfall being the end of the saga and squeezed in this pointless story to have another year of seasons in order to wrap up the story with the final shape. So I have to assume that will at least be a step up in quality with the conclusion. That's not even big copium because it's not hard to do better and they did it with Witch Queen. And you'd think they'd want it to not suck so that people stick around for whatever they have next. Uh, otherwise, a lot of people will probably just be content to leave on that note. Uh, anyway, copium. All that aside, people are just getting more and more burnt out, hoping for some massive change to the formula. Like, some people will be forcing themselves to play every day, being like, this is boring. My brother in Christ, you gotta recognize the burnout and mix it up a little. This season honestly wasn't bad, you're just bored of it. I have 3,000 hours in the game and I hate it! I wish I never played! Bro, what? <laughs> what were you doing not being entertained all that time? That's a you issue. The latest dungeon was sick. Uh, the best there's ever been. Knocked out the solo flawless right away. It was actually kind of scary for once. Loved it. FOMO is a mindset. It can happen if you stop enjoying a game, but feel obligated to keep playing anyway out of habit. You just have to learn to recognize that and don't. Uh, I hate hearing someone be like, I wish I didn't have to grind X thing. You don't. You really don't. Or uh, I hate Destiny. It's my favorite game. Haha, -ha, that joke is even funnier the 17th time. If you actually hate it, please stop playing. I know it's a joke, but... I don't want to be around your negative ass if you're actually unhappy and just addicted. I don't even see it as addicting. I don't know why. People think this is MMO levels of addicting? What? I don't see anywhere near enough number go up to agree with that, but I guess it's because I'm already basically done with all that early progression. I don't know. I just happen to enjoy the gameplay now and then. Impossible. Insane. I know. It comes back to there being a social endgame, which is what gives some of the slight grind a purpose as opposed to feeling like a hollow, depressing progression towards nothing. There's a lot of co-op stuff with the big raid launches to feel prepared for, and as someone who's not social at all, uh, I do not want to go to parties and bars. I'm terminally online and I live in a forest, so it's fun to interact over a game that I know a lot about. Not like I'm cracked skill-wise or anything, but I've been here long enough to know obscure niche game mechanics and lore far too well. And uh, I like being that invested in one thing. I even had fun for a while just jumping into random Sherpa LFGs to teach people stuff. It's kind of fun to talk to random people for their first runs of stuff, because that's not something I would ever really do in any other context. And it's fun to teach uh, when the people you're teaching actually want to be there. There's a reason I got into sharing tips and tricks in the first place. Uh, anyway, I'm not even playing much right now, but it is the perfect genre for me. A super smooth, responsive FPS combined with a long-term character progression. The environment and music team always hits it out of the park to boot. It's an MMO light that gives some of the fun without demanding absurd grind. Uh, people who say the game is grindy, you do not know the meaning of the word. You can basically engage with all the content the game has to offer after one day of playtime without optimizing your setups. But you can if you want to, and you should for the absolute hardest stuff, uh, the biggest events like day one raids. The build crafting has gotten simpler in many ways, maybe not ideal, but I think it's still fun. Also stuff like removing the armor elements, the subclass verbs, stunning champs is all great. So much less restrictive. Um, parts of the pointless grind keep getting reduced, not needing the power increase every single season. Love it. And it's clearly a very tough genre to enter as a developer. Many attempts have failed, which sucks for there to not be more competition. But I think in this specific niche, nobody's been able to deliver as much as consistently. Their live service approach isn't perfect, obviously. Like, it's easy to point to the infamous concept of always putting safe consistency over creative risk or over delivery because you wouldn't want to set a new high bar or people will be disappointed when you fall short of that. Uh, yeah, that has made it get stale more quickly for long-term players. Can you hear that? 
not a helicopter. Yeah, it's kind of stale, but uh, also sadly often true. That's how precedents and expectations work. You do something epic, then everything after will be wise and this as good as that. But it's an interesting topic because I do prefer having highs and lows. Lows don't feel good when they're happening. Yeah, but uh, they very much encourage people to actually take a break. And then when that big high comes along again, maybe next expansion, you will love and appreciate it that much more upon coming back. To have highs, you gotta have the lows. Obviously not sustainable to just keep getting better in a straight line forever. Uh, I totally understand why they don't want to consciously bleed players and money, just hoping they come back when it gets cool again. But if we only have this horizontal delivery line where everything feels the same, yeah, nothing's crashing and burning, but you kind of get strung along forever, feeling less excited, but also not taking a break because stuff is happening, just getting more burnt out and frustrated. And in a way that could also lead to a, a crash like we're maybe seeing. Despite the consistency, it's just gotten old for the old guard. I just really wish the content was built around permanent additions to the game, however difficult that may be. For the sake of introducing people, it sucks for the game to not just get bigger and better with time. I don't want four similar activities a year that just go away. Like some of my favorite memories starting out with having so many different exotic quests to go do or whatever. I can't even share that with new people. They just aren't there anymore. Buy these 12 guns in a kiosk. Anyway, no matter what, if you play a game for a decade, it's going to be less exciting than when you started. Newsflash. I'm not going to defend the PvP side of the game because I ain't playing it for that. That's clearly not their priority. And I get that neglected feeling like the PvP support was redirected to the Marathon Extraction Shooter Project. Uh, that aside, for how much crap they get in general, Bungie has some of the best communication and transparency for a game that size compared to the games I come from. I mean, holy moly. Granted, you heard me talk about having a history with what? Activision and Jagex mainly. Jesus, Bungie's a saint. Uh, yeah, there are always going to be some issues. And I know maybe you got to keep pushing back to delay the slippery slope. But from where I come from, you have it pretty good here, you know. And uh, you just got to play some other games. It is a shame that the new player experience isn't the best with how you're stepping into a decade of storytelling without much explanation. And the early content was removed. Everyone hates that. I know that it wasn't getting played a ton and it sounded unavoidable on the technical side. And if you're determined to get in, then it's fine. There are plenty of summary videos to watch. You can find the old DLCs for cheap on some key site. Like I got in late. I enjoyed the journey of getting better, listening to lore all the time, learning the systems. That's the most fun part, a magical time. Thought I'd scare some people off, of course. It's really just whenever I'm listening to the soundtracks or a motif is subtly used in the perfect way, I think, man, what a journey. People are missing out on this. It's, it's funny that I played the Destiny 1 beta, summer 2014. And I said, I find this concept too fun. I don't have time for this. I will get addicted. I got to focus on school and keeping up my COD channel thing. I think I only had uh, three to 5,000 subscribers at the time, just about to start university. This is around uh, ghosts preparing for advanced warfare. And I wonder what would have happened if I jumped ship and stuck with destiny hardcore. Would I still be going? I think there's a good chance. I'm a pretty good match for it. I know the franchise did have a few dark ages. It's impossible to say I regret it, though, because you can't know. I had a lot of cool times with COD, met a lot of friends. Who knows what the other path would have looked like? So yeah, something being worth your money is 100% opinion, of course. Some people spend 12 bucks on a non-transferable skin or remote that they'll get bored of the same day, or like a fancy copy. And some people say 12 bucks is way too much for weeks of story missions, part of a big evolving narrative, lore books to read into, activities, dozens of weapons, and full sets of cosmetic things on top of that if you care about it. Just because some gun models got reskinned. And that's fine, nothing wrong with having higher expectations or just being bored with it. Some people think it's a scam, some people think it's the best bang for your buck in all of entertainment. I literally see both. Funny how that works. It's also funny seeing people say the monetization has gotten so bad when it still feels nothing like COD to me. To me, they just make some cosmetics every season that I ignore, or actually that I earn several of through gameplay. I know that we've all just been conditioned to stores at this point. It's part of modern gaming. Let the whales go crazy. And I do understand that cosmetics are part of the game and the chase. I don't just say the blanket, oh, it's cosmetic, so it doesn't matter at all. Uh, but when I feel I can earn everything I care about just by playing, and I don't even feel like they're neutered, watered down cosmetics that I earn from triumphs and all that stuff. It's simply not something I'm going to get worked up about. There's even the earnable currency for getting more cosmetic stuff from the store for free, unlike the modern COD direction where it was all exclusive, which to me is far more boring and off-putting. The divide between payers and peasants. I just get the deluxe expansion, I get an absurd amount of time out of that, and I never feel like I'm missing out on anything. At least Destiny's weekly blog posts have tons of info and insight about the direction of the game, not the, the COD style attempt that I remember from like Cold War era that I always think of. After years of begging for regular communication, this week in COD, 
Buy the eight new bundles we made this week. I will now describe them all in nauseating detail. Also, new game mode, hardpoint. Wow, so glad I checked out this post. <laughs> no game dev talk, just bundles. Those are probably outliers, it just sticks out in my memory, it's funny. All right, enough AAA D writing, I suppose, because by wanting to casually enjoy something, I'm defending the billion dollar corporation and everything they do, right? Uh, shockingly, no, I don't care about defending the corporation and they don't care about me. I just enjoy enjoying things. I'm kind of quirky like that. Uh, I can't help but be realistic and want to point out when an effort to change something feels misplaced and is really just negatively impacting your and others' enjoyment of a game. And I guess I've just been talking about MZX now. I could go on for a while. Let's do it. It's kind of fun to have this conversation once every five years. Used to be totally sick of it, of course, because I've lived in this world for like 15 years and none of it has changed. We lost the MTX thing a long time ago. I think the core of it is quite simply, if you're enjoying the game, it's very easy to ignore the store. The game is fun, so who cares? Go wild if you want to pay more for no reason. If you stop enjoying the game, then it can quickly feel gross, as if all the effort is going into the store instead of investing in the game experience. So again, it's fine to dislike the direction of the game and hold them to a higher standard. I support it. Why wouldn't I? That's why this is a dumb thing to even talk about. It's a no-win situation for me, because I always support the pushback to some degree. I'm just a player. I'm on the player's side. It'd be great for them to earn back more player trust so people can stop being so damn negative all the time. Like, that's ever gonna happen. But uh, also, I just want to have fun. It's not that serious. So I'm not gonna sit around and be negative all the time. As we should know, complaints rarely matter. You have no recourse outside of not playing the game. Even if you hate to be told that, that is how to turn your complaint into a tangible figure. It's kind of cringe to make a new video essay every week complaining about how evil the greed is and how those dumb addicted fans won't stop playing so they can get away with it. And then beg for people to donate to your Patreon so you can keep complaining about it. What a saint. What an artist in need of patronage. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank God your valuable takes exist. You're adding so much more value to the world than the game creators. You deserve my $12. Truth the power, brother. I'm not saying it's wrong to bring up, of course, because this is YouTube and you need to explicitly state your point every 10 seconds just for people to misunderstand you anyway, so why bother? I saw plenty of balanced videos on it back when it was a hot topic for Destiny most recently. 100% valid to talk about it. Go make some noise. It's only when people tend to dwell on the negative and offer nothing else. Like, that's your whole personality. That's what I think gets hypocritical and annoying. Just hitting the rage bait button nonstop. Maybe it's the air of superiority that gets me, as if you're accomplishing something and you're better than the positive people who aren't fighting the good fight with you. It, like, it breeds fans who go out and attack those people just because they want to enjoy something. Anyway, I think out of everything I saw talked about, uh, the stuff most worth making more noise about for Destiny is streamlining the messy-ass old DLC for new players. Just bundle all the old stuff together, make it cheap. That actually feels like a viable change for them to make because it is a barrier to entry, which you'd think they would want to be lowering when you're doing the cosmetic store stuff. And the old fans are tired, you gotta get new people. And also to fix the silver bundles to match the price of a season. I could see them give up that little bit of manipulation for a little PR win. If it's only the cosmetic store that bothers you that much though, I think you, you really gotta stop playing. As a semi-casual enjoyer of the game, I hope stuff gets better, fresher, different, enter a new golden age of player trust. Until then, contrary to what you might see on Reddit, a state of the game is actually not that bad. Whoa! Uh, the narrative is starting to heal after the Lightfall bomb, so uh, I guess I'll just be part of the problem getting the early expansion. Like many persistent complainers are part of the problem, except I'll be honest about it. Uh, not like I've ever bought any MTX. I know plenty of complainers who do. Yeah, you can't take the moral high ground if you buy tons of MTX and then complain about it, because that is still much worse than not buying and not complaining. And I want to wrap this up, but I hate the feeling of needing to cover every base. I know some people hate being hit with the just take a break if you don't like it response. The good old just stop playing. Because I know that generally complaints come from a place of caring and wanting something to get better. But... For some people, like if your standard for better is the magical feeling you had when starting out or a time in gaming that we're simply never returning to, it's unlikely you'll ever feel that again. And you're not helping if you're just sticking around being negative and unrealistic. You're kind of just bringing other people down. Are you having fun or not? So give the feedback, then come back later. Minus one from the player count. That's the way it is. No like product, no consume product. Stop being miserable with this parasocial game relationship thing because they don't care. They don't care what you think is unfair. What matters is what people will pay for. It's weird to me when people mock the argument of if you don't like it, stop playing. How is that not just the truth? Even if it's a harsh truth. I've literally seen people say, if you're not enjoying something that's supposed to be fun, you should take a break or quit. And there are replies saying, I hate this shill mentality, just accepting it instead of fighting. 
But <laughs> taking a break isn't just advice to have a healthy attitude and maybe enjoy your life more and let other people enjoy theirs. It's also the most effective way to register your opinion, prove your disinterest, prove that their actions lost you as a customer. That's how it works. Bungie said it themselves when the game was ass in year one and bleeding out in Curse of Osiris. An angry player base at least means people care about the game. That's a passionate player base. An angry Reddit thread with 15k upvotes is, in a way, a healthy sign. People care. A game is in trouble and dies when nobody cares. They just leave. Apathy kills. That's what prompted the massive overhaul and over-delivery of Forsaken that saved the game. So are you really fighting harder by continuing to play and just being miserable about it, yelling on Twitter? Why does this even need to be said? And as a hypocrisy check, like with me and Cod, I've always tried to be clear when it comes up that, yeah, I don't like all these directions a the game has gone, and as the progression guy feels like there's nothing left here for me, they're appealing to a different audience, but also, I've just been doing the same thing for a long time. Of course that's part of it. A fresh player discovering everything for the first time will have more fun than me. So I'll leave. I'll recognize that and move on and stop being a bummer. Even though it was practically my job, so I would have been justified in staying anyway if I thought I could still provide good coverage or entertainment or whatever. If it's not your job and you're just ranting on Reddit nonstop, what are you doing? It must just be that not everyone finds negativity exhausting. I don't get it. I instinctively want to solve problems, I think, so that I can get back to being happy. And when I clearly can't do anything, it's just miserable to see complaining. A company's gonna make something more consumer friendly if they need to, to restore some trust and bring people back to a dying game. Otherwise, they'll just price things for optimal profit and retention. That's not some grand evil, that's just obvious. And you're not gonna organize a boycott because most of the people buying the stuff are not the ones listening. A lot of people listening are actually happy. It's funny that this isn't even relevant to me in Destiny because I come from a place that felt worse. This is a joke to me. And there are tons of not as burnt out people who are happy with the state of the game, believe it or not. Even on Reddit, there is some balance. Positivity comes up a surprising amount. A cod felt far more negative to me. And in regards to the store, far more forced on you as a core part of the game. And boring, because you couldn't earn anything. I am swimming in Destiny cosmetics. My god, I don't need any more. So I do honestly wish the best of luck with forcing some improvement. If it is no longer a game you enjoy, definitely let them know by leaving. And alright, time to go back to being sick of this topic for another five years, as I continue to enjoy my basic-ass gaming tastes. <laughs> I'm such an old man, all these gaming hipsters, oh, you're so cool for dunking on the big popular game. Oh, you like a wholesome indie 2D platformer. Mm. Good choice, the correct answer. You have such good taste. Uh, some people just love hearing themselves complain all the time. How is it not exhausting and demoralizing? That's why I hated myself for doing that to COD. Just say your piece and then go do what you find fun. Add some positivity. All right, Dan, that was an entire separate video of an answer. Uh, where did this start? What games are you playing? Why do I do this to myself? Short videos would be so much easier. To kind of wrap up the game talk, uh, have I considered Warframe? Uh, not really, sorry. Uh, I sometimes hear it mentioned as the Destiny competitor because sci-fi looter game, uh, but then people are like, nah, it's super different. Uh, for what I've seen, I lean much more towards the familiar feeling shooter side of Destiny over the crazy movement, mech looking characters. Uh, plus, obviously, there's attachment from just being invested. I do like being at the high end of the game, as well as knowing a network of people who also play. Uh, not impossible that I check it out someday, though. And then do I play Diablo? Uh, sorry, you can probably tell where this is going. And I'll just give a more general answer for any similar question. Um, as you can sadly predict from all the rambling, I do not pay much attention to new games. I can appreciate all your individual passions for them. Uh, like, I know I mainly rambled about not being interested in a single-player thing that wouldn't last. But it's also incredibly rare to commit to a new big multiplayer thing for obvious reasons. I have monogamous game relationships that last a decade. It's a big shift to become an expert in a new thing. Uh, I imagine it would take several good friends all pulling nonstop and to think the game looks fun. I've only ever mained a handful of games and uh, only the most basic stuff like COD being a huge part of my life for a decade and a half. Uh, I had the huge Minecraft phase. I was a Minecraft pro back in the day. Uh, that's what led to the Woodycraft arc, and uh, now only engaging with Destiny now and then? Wow, I have such complex taste in games, man. I just rarely get excited about new things. I wish I did, don't get me wrong, it seems fun. I don't know how I sped run getting old, but I see a new game trailer and I never think, that seems so new and exciting. And meanwhile, other people are pogging, I, I just don't get it. Maybe I've existed in the gaming world so deeply for so long, and also turned it into work in some cases. I feel like I've seen it all, despite not even playing that many things. Like, I just don't need to play it to get it, you know? And you may think, well, that's clearly stupid, but I don't know, man. I'm pretty good at predicting how something's gonna feel. It's like how my reactions to COD updates or trailers became very predictable. There were never complaints about that. People just want to hear you talk about it. 
but uh, I can predict what my reaction will be. I can pre-write 90% of the script and fill in the details. Just an AI trained on myself. No need to think original thoughts anymore. Bottom line, I clearly just get different things out of games than many people, and I know I'm the cringe one. As far as new stuff, it really is just the promise of VR as it continues to develop that excites me. Uh, okay, wait, I separated this one because I have the shocking answer of, yes, I did play Tears of the Kingdom. I was being pressured to try it, and I was resisting as usual, but I said, all right, I'll stop being annoying without having tried it, and uh, I'll make myself try this game that seems to be beloved for good reason, obviously. I could clearly see the fun, and I've never played any Zelda game. I watched uh, Breath of the Wild playthrough back when it came out, so I forgot all the details. It was all new to me, uh, so that was very cool. I got into it to see if I would start to love it, or if I would never be able to shake the feeling of wasting time. And it did gradually become more fun over many days. Of course, because it's a good game, but sadly, still a lot of the latter. I could never feel fully invested. I know that's dumb. Waste of time is completely subjective. And I know that as a kid, I would have loved the game, done everything, and not had that worry floating around about how quickly everyone will be done with it, so just don't bother. Um, so I had some fun with it, uh, but I mainly just did want to get through it. I'm not there to do every side quest, collect every seed, every frog gem, because it's not like I wanted to search up guides to just be optimal and get everything. It kind of defeats the purpose of exploring and discovering stuff yourself. I mainly like the shrines. I mean, they're mostly short and simple, but it's fun to come up with a zero IQ contraption and then have it actually work. Uh, the freedom of the sandbox to solve stuff your own way is awesome game design. Uh, I always got the chest in every shrine. Can't leave without that. But I can't get into farming materials for hours to upgrade your battery and armor or whatever, even though I normally would be that person. Like when I find myself in a cave or dungeon, the instinct takes over and I have to make sure I collect every single thing, explore every corner. But in general, yeah, just teleport me to the next shrine, please, which is not really how you're meant to play being a main objective Marty. Uh, it is an awesome game with an absurd amount to explore and the freedom to do it however you want. But yeah, despite me being all about the completionism and longer lasting multiplayer games, for single player stuff, unless I'm recording it to make it into something or sharing it with other people, even just friends, I did actually play in some Discord calls just streaming it, that was funny. But alone, the interest vanishes, just feels too fleeting. Another part is how it always seems so easy to cheat. There always end up being a dozen super simple duplication glitches or whatever, which in a multiplayer environment can never be allowed to exist for very long. And that also completely cheapens the idea of working and grinding away to max your character or whatever. I know you could just police yourself to not ruin the progression, and I actually didn't feel the need to abuse that stuff, but if I cared about maxing everything, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing the fast way. But it's as easy as press two buttons instead of looking for rocks to hit for days, and it doesn't affect anyone else. Yeah, I mean, I think it's in most people's nature to find the most efficient way to do something when it doesn't harm anyone. Uh, anyway, I only actually did one of the main dungeons, and then maybe like half the shrines in the game. I explored none of the underground, uh, but that was good enough for me. I could go back and finish it someday, had some fun with it, but it didn't change my grouchy old man mindset. Bummer. Legends Arceus, on a similar note, I did really enjoy. There was way less to do in that game in comparison, but I did get briefly addicted to completing that. The, the pre-existing Pokemon obsession, I guess, carried my interest further than normal. I'm part of the problem, I know. But one, that's cheating because I live streamed it, documented it. That was a fun part about it. Grinding out stuff to be ready for doing the story stuff on stream was fun. And two, in the end, it kind of ended up reaffirming my belief because it was a two-week passion that everyone dropped as quickly as we picked it up, and that was kind of sad. In an instant, I was the last one left playing, and was like, yeah, I guess we're all done with this. All right, enough of that type of game talk. How long does it typically take to produce one of those mega COD videos? Uh, thank you for the kind words. Um, also, at the same time, any guides or resources for the editing style. Uh, yeah, it certainly is a process. Uh, although I'm sure it could be so much faster if I just weren't so obsessive about some things. Hard to estimate the total, maybe 100 to 150 hours. There's like the setup and organizing, uh, debugging any issues with the game, then playing through the game, call that 10 hours, then make all the intro stuff, then there's the first big editing pass of cutting out the parts where I say something of value that I feel progresses the story in some way, failures, learning something, anything. Then maybe turns the 10 hours of footage into three hours. This is done over multiple project files, by the way, to reduce lag. Always gotta split your recordings up, but an hour each. Only import a couple in each project file, merge them at the end. Splitting up recordings into chunks is something they don't teach you in non-existent YouTube school. Anyway, then there are a couple more detailed passes, just cutting out more extraneous stuff, adding whatever little jokes come to mind, more proof watching, get the timing feeling good for each cut. Sometimes you want a bit of a pause, sometimes you want it to cut more abruptly. So maybe end up trimming that three hours down to under 2.5. Got to do uh, at least one one-time speed pass for audio balancing. Probably spend too much time doing that. 
Then uh, render out the audio tracks to do some compression. I probably nobody needs to hear all these details. I'm sorry. Uh, the thing is, it's a playthrough. It's not even a complicated edit. It's like the simplest thing. I'm not that full of myself that I think a playthrough is hard to make. It's just long and I'm overly picky with the details of what to include and what to leave out. Oh yeah, and then for some reason I put myself through manually fixing all the subtitles and making my own thing for that because YouTube's timing sucks and I want it to be correct. Uh, the copium is that it's a final proof watch. Anyway, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm complaining. I choose to do it all that way and uh, it's awesome to see the response. As for actual guides or resources, I'm sorry that I'll be pretty useless there. A lot of it is just by feel, knowing what I want the video to look like and making it happen. Uh, I don't exactly have tons of actual editing skills. I'm only pretty fast at the basics and anything I've picked up in over a decade of it. Uh, basically, whenever there's an effect I want to learn, I just go look up that tutorial and make it happen. If I use it enough, then it ends up getting kind of added to my repertoire. The recent Destiny project was a fun example of learning all sorts of new effects because I wanted it to look good. And that thing took ages, <laughs> but it was a passion project through and through. Something I was excited to wake up and work on every day for like a solid month. That was crazy. Uh, doing those uh, mini tutorials was fun and like making those smash intros. I was pretty proud of how close I got with those. I was not happy with any of the tutorials I found. Some people just slap together some text that drifts too slowly down into place. The font isn't right. The background is static. And they just call it good? Like what? You didn't even try to copy the source material? It's right there. Just, just copy it frame for frame. You got to have some standards. If I want to make an effect, I don't want it to look like super half-assed ugly. It's got to be at least 80% assed. Even if it still looks amateurish, at least it was just snappy, looked okay. Anyway, I'm sorry that I'm kind of useless here. Video making was a slow learning process over time for me. I sucked ass for a long time and still do just to a lesser extent. And uh, it's hard to explain or boil down to a formula. It's just having a vision for what you want it to look like and then doing that. Got a couple things about Black Ops. Uh, have you ever done the Black Ops series on the hardest difficulty? Welcome in. And uh, then will you ever play Black Ops? <laughs> I did play all the Black Ops games. Uh, BO1 was just before I made the channel. Uh, Black Ops 3 Realism was the first one I did as a playthrough series, and I could totally see going back for the sake of having a playthrough of every COD, yeah. Uh, I would want to come up with some kind of added layer of challenge, though, since it isn't a blind playthrough or a remastered game, I'd feel like I should be adding something to it. Okay, some thoughtful questions here. I will avoid retreading too much Destiny, my bad, did too much of that. Uh, do I think Destiny support will wane if Marathon takes over? I get how it's logical to think that way. Um, I feel like surely it's much easier to monetize a big PvP game like that, just add some guns and events, make a new map once a year or longer. Surely that's much less content you need to create to keep people engaged. People kind of make their own stories in those games compared to Destiny's story PvE stuff, where if you aren't pumping out fully original missions, people are like, this sucks, reused assets. Now, that said, I think they could just continue as two separate teams of people. Like, I don't think it's necessarily needed or helpful to just have everyone focus on Marathon, like how you can't throw money at a problem, hire 10,000 people and expect a good game. So, uh, I don't know, I doubt they need all hands on deck to ditch Destiny for Marathon. Destiny's a pretty big IP, and as you say, as long as it's profitable, they should continue it. Ideally, maybe Sony had plans for some kind of TV show to expand interest in the universe, set that shit in the dark age, that can make some sick content. But, uh, yeah, copium. But anyone's guess, and we just have to wait and see what the plan is, post-final shape. How different will it be? Who knows? I'd love to see a huge shake up in the formula, even a fresh start, fresh game, just call it destiny with different eras you can choose to play but that is some comical copium um maybe it hardly changes and they just pick a new storyline like leaving the solar system uh maybe literally nobody cares like marvel after endgame and it dries up and dies and then yeah i could totally see them scaling back the sport to focus on marathon so i think that's really the only factor are people going to keep playing do i think the microsoft activision deal will happen it is interesting to see what will come of that. Um, honestly, based on the info you gave in the question, you are far more knowledgeable and in tune than me, so I really don't have anything to add, I'm afraid. Uh, the side effect of my grilling mentality is being ignorant to a lot of things. Thoughts on the ethics of AI usage in game development? Oof, I say topic. Uh, yeah, I think I saw the same demo of real-time NPC dialogue a while back uh, to make a game feel more unpredictable and alive. It's not like that's a mind-blowing application of the tech, and yet it really was neat to see in action. Uh, we certainly are on the precipice of some crazy change. And yeah, it's easy to see how maybe not for the better. I'm sure it'll start out just being used as a tool to support creative people because stuff like AI NPCs are cool. But at least for now, you kind of need an overarching vision for what the game is and how to use them properly. A person who knows what they want to make and how they're going to sell it. And then they make it a reality. I perhaps foolishly think that it'll stay that way for a while still. Uh, not even because the tech can't replace people, because it already can replace a staggering number of people, 
but because it'll continue to be taboo to support anything too AI driven over a more human project or idea. The tech moves fast, but people's acceptance, not always as fast. Eventually though, yeah, when it can fully make something fun enough or entertaining enough all on its own, most people aren't gonna care about the ethics. Uh, AI sponge is pretty funny sometimes. Big stuff is coming, interesting times. I guess the ethics of replacing people is what I thought of, but uh, there's the, I guess the ethics of how it's just reorganizing what it learned from people. And uh, you could frame that as like art theft and stuff like that. Um, like if you train it on a small sample, well then yeah, you're just copying those people. But an infinite sample, well, that's basically just what we do. It is artificial us. We see things, learn from them, and synthesize our own version. I saw dozens of COD channels, and I made my own from what I learned. Is my unrepresentable, unsimulatable soul the difference maker? The, uh, that ethereal, personal, creative touch? Does that even exist? Alright, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't spend any time thinking about it. Too much to consider or to try to predict. I probably should be more in tune, but I don't know. I really do just be grilling and letting it happen. And how do I prefer my eggs? Ah, nice cool down. I haven't had eggs in a, a long ass time, but I used to make eggs on toast way too much and it was always over easy because I don't like the slimy uncooked white bit, but you 100% need the runny yolk, the solid yolk, gross. Um, yeah, it was such an easy, cheap, complete protein, but I probably over cholesterol myself with that. So I've been on the oatmeal train ever since to make amends. Opinions on Modern Warfare 3 survival? Uh, maybe I shouldn't be answering what I don't feel like I have a ton to say, but uh, yeah, it was fun as a kid for sure, uh, with his own little progression system and a uh, modern rendition of the mode that I would care about. I think it would have to tie into a larger game, like uh, the goal of earning the Cold War Zombies camo to use in other modes, even though I didn't really play Warzone or the other modes at that point. Uh, or sorry to say the D word, but like if Destiny had a big survival style mode, I'm already invested and it'd be easy for them to build incentives that I would care about because they apply to the rest of the game and it'd be fun to set a record or whatever. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure what would make a standalone game like that replayable for me as an adult. And uh, Modern Warfare 3 in general, it was alright. <laughs> it was, uh, that was when there was all the studio drama, so uh, it didn't feel as strong or innovative. It didn't feel as memorable as the first two in the trilogy for me. I had plenty of fun with it though. Uh, for some reason, when I think Modern Warfare 3, the very first thing that always comes to mind is changing your colorblind settings so that you can see stealth bombers on the map. Uh, also face off the, the 2v2, 3v3 stuff with the unique maps they made for it. That was a really fun addition that came later in the life cycle. What is my skincare routine? Well, uh, every morning I always wash my face thoroughly with a generic skin cleanser. Uh, shower every night. It feels gross to get in bed not being clean. Uh, like any man, I make use of whatever body wash shampoo has the most things in one. Three in one? Great. Seven in one? Oh my god. I have no idea. It's whatever's cheapest. Uh, yeah, that's it. My skin ain't that great. Uh, any podcasts? Uh, not really. Only PKA I've listened to for a long time because I grew up with it in the OG COD scene. I'm like half a year behind right now, but I still put that on sometimes for some background noise. Uh, that shampoo joke was a reference to that. And food recipes. I uh, don't really have anything specific. I liked making those pizzas with the bread machine for a while. I like slow cooker stuff, make some honey garlic chicken or whatever. I'm uh, rarely a recipe follower though because I don't want to take all that time to make anything that complex. I think I know how food works enough to just make something not taste terrible. Uh, most of the time, just some generic pasta thing, stir fry thing, burger style thing. A frozen ground turkey is shockingly cheap here and I think really good. I love me some uh, some turkey burgers. Anyway, uh, maybe try making some fresh pizza. It's fun. Got lucky. That was a perfect one. Finish the sentence. Camera clicked off. All right. Do I love McDonald's? I mean, no. Love is a strong word. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not going to pretend it's inedible, but uh, my opinion of it really has dropped as I've gotten older. And uh, I guess the food has also gotten smaller and probably worse. Top three restaurants, though. I'm actually having trouble even thinking of any chains that I care about or have had in the past five years. I'd probably just get whatever nearby Asian food or something. But yeah, I honestly never get restaurant food. I love my groceries. I can treat myself with the tons of 50% off stuff they have in the deli. I can't imagine paying full price for that stuff, but it's so good. And it's fun to see what they've got. All kinds of bread, cakes, sandwiches and wraps, chicken strips, giant salads. My improvised paper heat shield fell off my camera because it's in a crazy hot window. Yeah, it's like one day old. There's nothing wrong with it. I've left that stuff in the fridge for weeks and there's no sign of change. Uh, anyway, my passion for 50% off deli food aside, uh, there's one thing that comes to mind, which I'm sure is also trashy. Uh, Olive Garden. We don't have them here. So whenever I'm in the States and we go to Olive Garden, I'm like, hell yeah, love me those breadsticks. I don't even want to order an entree. I'm just getting that endless chicken gnocchi and you better keep bringing those breadsticks just to compound the trashiness. All right. Favorite Sour Patch flavor. Uh, yeah, I honestly have no idea what they even are. 
I probably had them at Halloween once 17 years ago. And you can never really miss with a red candy, right? You know you're hitting strawberry or watermelon. And blue usually doesn't miss either. The orange, yellow, green is always going to be risking citrus, which is hit or miss. You might prefer that. Uh, purple, I'm down for grape. But uh, yeah, I have no clue. How's your day going? Well, thanks for asking, everyone. Uh, nothing crazy exciting coming up, but it's going all right. This has been a huge recording day, fighting through my ruined voice, sore throat, of course, because I guess I speak incorrectly or I'm just genetically bad at talking for long periods of time. Do I need speech therapy? Uh, also, it's very hot. Uh, do I look shiny? I'm excited to turn on that fan over there. Sometimes take a break to blast it. Oh, yeah, and I got through this whole liter. Remember when this was full? Yeah, but going good. How about you? Oh, good, good. Or sorry that happened. How do I prefer potatoes cooked? Damn, I mean, the, the beauty of the potato is just how many hundreds of ways you can combine it with fat to create perfection. Uh, right now, I'm thinking a, a high effort hash brown is where it's at. Yeah, this Q&A classic wipe from the back, front to back. But, you know, maybe a bit of a pinch, multiple fingers holding the paper, you know. It's not like you just do one giant smear in one direction. You, you pinch towards the center, clean everything up down there. How I traveled overseas and where would I want to go? Good day from Australia. That'd be a cool place to visit. Uh, I did go to Europe once, did some of the most basic London tourism, went to a couple castles, Stonehenge, a very exciting rock pile, went to Paris, climbed the Eiffel Tower. Uh, the French people were indeed rude and liked Nutella a surprising amount. I was even taught your silly language. It was forced on me my whole childhood. Et tu me traites toujours comme un touriste ignorant. Yeah, aside from that, been to Mexico twice and a handful of places in the States. But I haven't traveled in quite a while. It's mainly my mom who loves the travel, and she works crazy hard to save up to make it happen. And I don't really have any personal travel desires. I'm much more comfort-oriented, so I'm happy to stay at home. Uh, if I did travel, it'd probably be to meet up with some online friends for some kind of event. Like if there's another Pokemon Worlds in Japan, something like that could be a sick trip. Although I'd probably have to not be the driving force. Someone else has to be more passionate than I am about making that happen. So it's a maybe someday. When is that solo Nez? Honestly, it's possible I try for it if I get bored enough. I felt like the Warlock one was beyond me, but uh, the new Hunter method doesn't look that insane. I have everything you need. I just have to make all those loadouts and practice it. Maybe. Guide on Max World War II social score. Uh, yeah, sorry man, that must be rough when you can't just AFK next to tons of supply drops or upload an emblem really early and get it popular or whatever I did. I imagine the headquarters is a ghost town. Uh, no more social credit for you, sorry. I'm afraid I don't have any good tips. What's the worst sandwich I've ever had? I don't know, I'm imagining a whole wheat bread with too much mayo and just a couple depressing cold cuts. Oh yeah, there was a bread question too. Uh, yeah, whole grain bread is good by the way, some seeds or whatever, good texture. It's just whole wheat that manages to still be kind of doughy while also tasting like ass. Of course, a nice fluffy sesame seed bun or some sourdough murders most things. And the best sandwich? Uh, also, I don't know, nothing specific comes to mind. If burgers are sandwiches, I make some banger-ass burgers. I like to be optimistic and say the best sandwich is one I have yet to experience. And the meaning of life, that would be the pursuit of the best sandwich. I know that's like the cliche deep question, but I don't even think it's deep. I mean, the meaning is what you make of it. That's kind of just true. Unless you believe in something outside this plane, I guess. If you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of wisdom. Ah, yes, that is a tough one. Assuming we ban the most obvious investment advice. Oh, buy more Bitcoin, lol. Uh, and sell it here, and then uh, rebuy it here. And uh, yeah, okay, like, we get it. I think that's like a good metric. If investment advice is your only answer to that question, you've been doing pretty dang good to not have more massive, obvious regrets. Uh, honestly, living in fear of regret is like a core anxiety of mine. Stuff like, I'd wish I had spent more time with my family is always a thing in my head. So I think I've done an okay job so far. That said, I tend to play things way too safe. So I'll probably look back in 10 more years and say, oh my God, take more risks, get out there. You were so obsessed with living without regret that you didn't live at all. And uh, yet I continue to stay in my comfort zone for the most part. Yeah, obviously I've learned a ton compared to dumb kid me, but I can't think of anything of value to really say. It just needs to be lived and learned because I already was obsessed with listening to the advice of my parents and people older than me. All this stuff like, oh, you'll look back on these days and blah, blah, blah. Youth is wasted on the young stuff. I felt like everyone my age would just brush that off when I was like, damn it, I know that's true. I know that I will be looking back on this before I know it and long for these days. And how do I maximize this time? The days are slipping away. It's a lot of pressure. Uh, don't need to go on that tangent for too long, though. That was at least a uh, half related to the question ramble, right? Sorry. Will I go back and review the classic cards with what I liked and didn't? I don't see doing that exactly. Uh, if you're talking the classics I'm playing now, like COD 1 to 3 era, I always give my thoughts at the end, and I don't have much to say past that. 
If you just mean all older games that I played long ago, like COD 4 to 16 era, uh, I could totally see revisiting them, yeah? It probably wouldn't be to critique. It would just be to revisit old accounts or do some kind of challenge or just have fun. Reminisce. Nostalgia. Novelty. Uh, I don't really feel any motivation to critique them. The current game is the one we complain about. Old games are for talking about the good times. A uh, question on if I have any military experience. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is appropriation cosplay. I have no military background or education, nor am I super into weaponry or anything like that. I do prefer to get things correct, but I really only have what I've picked up from all these years of covering COD, plus any bits of research I've done over the years, to not sound completely ignorant. But for the most part, I am. How much do you think social media has changed over the years, especially YouTube? I mean, that's a huge topic that I won't have very much insightful to say about, but uh, I'll just say there's always good and bad. It's easy to say, oh man, YouTube was great back in the day, felt like a tight-knit community of people just creating out of the passion for it. Now the internet's been flooded with normies and everything sucks. And sure, there's some truth to it, but uh, there's also a ton of incredible quality stuff that didn't exist back then. And the fact of the matter is, people are making the stuff that people watch. Uh, even if it's appealing to children, or a lowest common denominator that you think is obnoxious, low effort, spammy stuff, or just hitching onto a trend that you feel is done to death, well, people are liking it. And that's fine. You just need to find what you like and stick to that community. Uh, the example you give of downfall videos, uh, I haven't really seen them honestly. Maybe you rage watched one and then YouTube proceeded to spam them to you nonstop forever because it do be doing that. I open a lot of videos in incognito now if I don't want it to affect my recommendations view history. I guess you can clear that though, or use the dots by the video to not recommend this. I think it helps eventually. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of garbage out there to be annoyed about, but I prefer not being annoyed. So just try to stick to the positive side. Okay, despite the length of this beast, I did not answer everything. I do apologize if you're among those. I most likely just didn't have anything to add, nothing funny to say. Or I felt like I answered it somewhere else already. Yep, sorry about that. But wow, uh, hopefully this was some good background noise for whoever's still here. Maybe we go again in two or three years when I once again forget what I said in this thing. Who knows? Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.